Welcome to Silicon Valley Asian Business Talk. This is Roger Chen from University of San Francisco. In this video program, we interview business leaders, entrepreneurs, and the leading experts from San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Asia, and beyond. This program is sponsored by University of San Francisco Center for Business Studies and Innovation in Asia Pacific. Hello, this is Roger Chen uh, from University of San Francisco Center for Business Studies and Innovation Asia Pacific, or CBSI Asia Pacific. And today we are very pleased to have uh, Vinny Gupta uh, coming to talk to us. Thank you, Vinny. Thank so, you, Roger. Yeah, why don't you uh, briefly introduce yourself and also your company? Absolutely, Roger. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's, it's an honor. Uh, 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 Several of our students have been to your university. My vice president programs as a doctorate in education from USF. It's a great honor. My name is Vinny Gupta. I am president of UCEZ, spelled as UCEAZY, College Admissions Academy. Our mission is to help students stand out in college admissions. Also, it's kind of interesting, um, relates to my next question which is a more like a general question relating to your Asian cultural background heritage whether or if it creates advantages or benefits for your new venture journey similarly whether your cultural background creates disadvantages and challenges in your new venture journey Profound question, Roger. Okay. I think there are two parts to this. The first is, I think the immigrant journey is a strength because that provides hunger. Mm, okay. And I don't think that our listeners need explanation on that because we are trying to settle in in our new home, we don't feel secure financially otherwise, and that breeds hunger. Mm. And that is the fuel of any entrepreneur. Yeah, that's very correct. Right? I'm in my 50s. I'm not a young chicken. For me to work 14-hour days is not easy. But at 12 o'clock in the night, when my body is saying, you need to go to sleep, but the mind is saying, go harder, because if you don't, somebody else is going to shut you see easy down. See, that hunger is, at the end of the day, what keeps an enterprise going, is the, that hunger and that fuel of the leadership. There are more bad days than good days. My daughter is an entrepreneur, by the way, uh, right here in San Francisco in the fintech space. I obviously love her, and I, and, uh, I, I uh, uh, do care about uh, how much stress is she going through. This is the journey, but we signed up for it, right? So I think that immigrant journey it provides the fuel to get going. Second part, though, I think there is a negative also. In my, in our, in, in my specific experience, I think that as we hire more and more people from this all-American culture, people are team members that were born here, raised here, sometimes it's hard for me to understand them fully because I don't have the shared life experience like they do in terms of how they view the world. That's a good point. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't grow up here, right? Uh, 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 I don't share the same music uh, or uh, uh, the same film history. Like between them, they might uh, all sing a song that makes them bond, whatever that, that might have been there when they were growing up. I also, is sometimes you also look at things from a place of trust not realizing what that other person is. So I think that understanding of people is a function of how, how well you understand the culture and values. So you end up making mistakes. Or sometimes you might read wrongly into a person who's good intentioned, but you apply a different cultural and values framework to it. That, I think, can be a handicap. How do you address that? You find team members who will mm, complement okay. you on Compliment, that. Compliment, right, yeah. Instead of beating yourself and saying, 
uh, you're a bad manager or you should know this. It's like, accept that you are different. But then you hire the right kind of people that will fill that gap for you. So, uh, so actually your answer is you know, very insightful, which makes a lot of sense about the immigrant journey itself is an asset. Because immigrant itself, just like a startup, you search for survival and a growth. I'm, if I can interrupt, I'm going to give you a juicy nugget, sure. which uh, I'm going to credit my daughter, Rinda, on this. And uh, uh, one day uh, over dinner, my wife, she and I, we were talking, and because we are now two entrepreneurs in the family. And uh, uh, my wife was saying, hmm, you know, I haven't taken any risk in my life. I'm not an entrepreneur unlike you guys. And my daughter said something very profound, which has stuck with me. She said, guys, take a pause. Think about who is the biggest entrepreneur. First of all, what is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is a risk taker yeah, how do for you a purpose. define it, yeah. Right? Immigrants are the biggest entrepreneurs there are. Who takes the risk of leaving a country where you grew up in, especially if the immigrants are like you and me? Uh, I wasn't financially underprivileged when I came here, right? I was already highly educated in the top, 1% of the Indian society, I was an entrepreneur. So that's what my daughter said that, guys, don't beat yourself that you're not entrepreneurs. This is the biggest risk that you took, right? So anyway, sorry, I interrupted No, 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 it's a very, very good point. Yeah, so following that, uh, let's look at the same question from slightly different angle. Uh, beside this entrepreneurship journey um, piece, which kind of creates, uh, as you correctly point out, advantages, disadvantages, you know, disadvantage means misunderstanding. Um, is there any kind of element from the being an Asian culture uh, that creates either advantage or disadvantages in your new venture journey? Yeah, I discussed the advantages, uh, disadvantages. Wow, this is a very slippy slope but mm. I'm going to go there. Uh, uh, how do I put this in a good manner? I think that I'm too trusting. Mm. Uh, and I, I could be wrong. It's hard for me to generalize this. But uh, uh, or actually, I'm going to reframe that. I think I'm too loyal. And I think that that loyalty comes from my journey from growing up in India. Uh, that and modesty or humility were key tenets of uh, that culture. Again, like I said, it's a slippery slope. I'm not trying to generalize at all that other cultures don't have that. In my, in my personal situation, I think that, and I've been told that by my team members, Vinny, you're sometimes loyal to a fault. Uh, like in some cases, some team members who simply are not contributing much or possibly are hurting, I don't let them go easily, so I'm not ruthless. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, I'm always like, uh, oh, this person has been with us. He has shown, he or she has shown loyalty. I think sometimes that comes at the cost to the organization because I don't make those ruthless decisions quickly. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, uh, so part of that is, I think, trust. Uh, again, this is a slippery slope, Roger. I don't want to say that this is other cultures don't have it or not, but, but I think that in my experience, I think that the all American culture, people are taught to be accountable from day one. It's just how the culture is. but. Out of that, I think people also become more individualistic and self-focused. Again, I'm trying to be very careful about my choice no, of that's words. A, that's a realistic, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, yeah. So in my case, I've been uh. hurt, and UCEC has been hurt because I kept going with loyalty, and the people at the other end were just looking out for themselves. Nothing wrong in what they did. I'm going to say that one more time. They were just looking out for their professional interest. I applied a loyalty framework to a business environment. Mm. And I, in hindsight, I should not have. In hindsight, I think, but Roger, I, I struggle with it. That 
long-term teams are built on a shared sense of purpose and loyalty to each other. Yeah, that's Where true. is the balance between that and complete professional relationships? I haven't figured it out quite honestly. I, str I struggle with that, but when I'm tired and, and my heart takes over, I tend to go towards what I am, which is taking people on face value and going with loyalty and ruthlessness.